Hi, I'm Luca. I'm a singer, pianist, guitarist, and a music student at the University of Oxford. And I'm going to be talking about how I mix and edit virtual choir videos like this one. And this one. Okay, so I'm going to be using Logic Pro, which I recommend mainly because of its great stock plugins, but these principles can be applied to any DAW. What we need are two takes each from every singer, recorded to a guide track, and ideally with a metronome counter at the start that they can clap along to, to alleviate any issues with syncing. Okay, so I'm in Logic now, and as you can see, I've basically got one singer's worth of alto takes. So one here, and one here. Usually I'd start a bass and work my way up, but because this polyphony and the alto has the first entry, I'm gonna start with the alto parts. So let's have a listen. Okay, so the first thing I notice is the quite exaggerated breath at the start. So what I'm gonna do is gonna to switch to fade tool in the secondary tool of Logic hold down command to activate it, select both of them, and just fade in like that. But what I've done is just slightly minimize the breath but not reduced it completely to be unnatural. And the reason you need to do this is because when there's lots and lots of parts, the breaths quickly add up and become pretty messy. I also heard a bit of a hard K there, so I'm gonna go over that with my fading tool. So it doesn't sound terrible, but one of the quickest things you can do to improve the quality of a singer's recordings is pan it left and right. First take almost all the way to the left, second take almost all the way to the right. And let's have a listen to that. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is just some basic vocal processing. And to do this, I'm going to select all my alto parts, which is in this case only two, and send it to a bus. And in Logic, I'm going to do this by pressing Create Track Stack, Summing Stack, which puts it in a folder and sends it all to one bus. So I can label this A. For parts that aren't bass, I'd usually add a channel EQ and just get rid of some of the low end that's maybe just background noise and not meant to be there. Next, I'm going to add some mild compression Yeah, I think the default in Logic works fine there. And now I think I'll add just a little bit of reverb to get us started. I don't want to affect the whole track, so I'm going to send it to a bus, and then go reverb, space designer. I'll just leave the default, but take down the length a little bit, and just add a tiny subtle bit here. So let's listen to how that sounds. Okay, so now I've repeated those steps for soprano, tenor, and bass. And I've also just added a third take to my alto section because I think it was the strongest take. And because of that, I'm gonna have it panned in the center. So now let's listen to the basic processing on all my tracks. Okay, so I like how that sounds, but I still think we can get it a bit closer to being like a real choir. So to do this, I'm going to start with some bus processing that affects all my tracks in some way to give it a sense of cohesion. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up this bus. So let's say we'll just pick bus 11. And this is on my alto track stack, so it's affecting all my altos. So to start off, I'm going to add the stereo spread plugin to give it a bit of width. And I'm going to add some chroma verb, which is just reverb, to make it sound like it's in a sort of virtual space. And I'm pretty happy with this, but I would just like to get rid of the low end because when you're adding reverb, it's quite easy to get out of control. And because it's choral, 
quite classical. You'd expect the long decay time of a cathedral, so I'm going to turn that up. So now let's listen to how my altos sound with the spread and the chroma reverb. So now I'm going to repeat these steps for all my other parts, but it's important to note that as I'm getting down towards the lower parts, I need to be sending less to the bus with the reverb and the stereo on and more as it goes higher. So soprano would be around here, bass would be around here. And I would compensate for that by turning the bass up in the mixer. This is because as a general principle, the lower the part, the more central it should be in terms of stereo panning. And also the bass can get out of control when there's too much reverb. Okay, so now let's listen to all my parts with both the basic processing and the bus processing. Okay, so that's almost perfect, but I would like to add a little bit of compression on that bus just in case the reverb and the stereo overtakes the main parts. So as you can see, what I've also done is just cut up with Command T to split regions and then I've added fade in and fade outs just to control some of the breaths and some of the places where the parts aren't singing. So once you've finished editing and tweaking all your tracks, we can move on to just adding a little bit of a mastering touch on the stereo out. And to do this, I'm going to use Ozone 8. Equivalence to any of these modules can be found in your door. Now, the most important bit is probably the maximizer, which is just the limiter. And this is just going to slightly boost our track to get it to the correct loudness. Now, because this is classical music, I don't want to compress it too much. So my threshold is pretty high, minus two. And it just gives us a subtle boost. What I've also done is used ozone to slightly exaggerate the stereo spacing of the high end here. But this can be done quite easily in a Logic stock plugin. Same stereo spread as before. I'm just going to only have it affect these upper intervals. Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about how we can bring out and enhance the solo part, how we can make some subtle dynamic changes, and how we can maybe tweak something that's a tiny bit out of tune. The solo part that I'm going to be enhancing is the second baritone solo in my recording of Take Six's O Come All You Faithful. Oh, The first thing I'm going to do is give it a bit more stereo width to bring it out in comparison to the other parts. So I'm going to add this stereo spread plugin. However, I only really want to bring out the upper intervals. What I've done next is duplicate this track and add the secondary take for much quieter. To bring out the secondary part, I'm going to add an exciter plugin, which should give the whole solo more of a ring and help it to stand out. I now want to 
want to add a subtle dynamic enhancement to this section in order to drive towards the end of the piece. To do this, I'm going to go Show Output Track, select Automation, make sure Volume is selected, and click at the start and end of the section. I'm now going to subtly raise it just to get a bit of a crescendo. Now, listening to this section, I thought I noticed something that was slightly out of tune, so I'm just going to isolate these three tenor parts. So I think one of the tenor three parts is slightly sharp towards the end. Oh, come let us atone. Oh. So what I'm going to do is go to pitch flex and just check which of these tenor three parts is sharp. So this one quite clearly goes up at the end, so I'm just going to amend that with pitch drift. found this video useful please like share and subscribe if you did thanks